Hi everyone, I'm Eric. In this generally recognized as safe episode, we're going to prepare milkfish three ways Taiwanese style. Milkfish is an important seafood in Southeast Asia, especially in the Philippines, Indonesia, and Taiwan. Milkfish farming plays a big part in the local economy in southern Taiwan. The southern Taiwanese people have gotten down to an art. Locally, milkfish is prized for its buttery belly and its milk-like flavor. In southern Taiwan, it's usually prepared fresh, by that I mean without further fermentation or too much processing. Due to its high fat content, the fish deteriorates quickly once it's caught. Also, the fish is notorious for its needle-like bones that are very difficult to separate from the flesh. One fish contains more than 180 fine bones, and deboning it requires skills that are only mastered by fishmongers specializing in milkfish. Southern Taiwanese people are very picky about their milkfish. In the local wet markets, you can easily find deboned milkfish fillet. You can buy the fillet and just sear it at home, and as simple as it sounds, it will be one of the best ways to enjoy the fish. The belly is very fatty, which gives the succulent mouthfeel. The belly is the easy part. We just need to find the central line on the sides of the fish and cut it off. The belly contains fewer bones than the rest of the fish, so it doesn't require too much work in preparation. Today the fish we got is already cleaned. I usually prefer buying the whole fish. This way I can cut it in the exact way that people do it in Taiwan and also save the organs for sautéing. Milkfish intestine and liver are really, really great, by the way. Usually the way it's, it's sold in the market in Taiwan, you have both sides of the belly in one piece, sort of like a butterfly. Since today the belly was already cut open to remove uh, the innards, we will end up with two separate pieces, which is fine. The belly does have a few bones, but they are much easier to deal with than fine bones in the back and we just pluck them out with tweezers. You see the fatty belly has a black membrane and this is the best part of the fish. Milkfish toro. Mmm. Now we cut off the head. We're gonna reserve the head for broth. The back part, as you can see, is super bony. If you just steam it or saute it, it's going to result in a pretty torturous eating experience. So Taiwanese people usually grind it and make it into fish balls. But how are you going to remove all the bones? Today I'm going to show you one way I've developed myself that's simple enough and doesn't require much work and results in a very little waste. First we're going to cut it into smaller chunks. You can feel the tiny bones as you cut through it. Usually I would then puree it in the food processor. But today I'm going to mash it with a mortar and pestle. Don't worry about the bones, as long as you don't puree it for too long. The bones are pretty soft and they will not break into smaller pieces. If you use a food processor, um, just pulse it until it's like fish goo, but it doesn't have to be too fine. For one milkfish, we add one tablespoon of egg white powder. One tablespoon of egg white powder, once reconstituted, is equal to egg white of one large egg. Of course, you can just use one fresh egg white per milkfish. I'm using egg white powder here because it's more convenient and it gives me more control over how much water I want in the mixture. If you use egg white powder, you have to add additional water later. We're going to also add a little bit of white pepper, about a quarter to a half teaspoon is fine, and some salt. Salt is very important as it interacts with the protein in the meat and it's going to promote cross-linking between the proteins. To make good Taiwanese fish balls, you want the fish balls to be somewhat chewy and bouncy, and salt is one essential ingredient. Now we're also going to add some starch for volume and to give it a bit more structure and texture. I like to use one tablespoon of cornstarch and one tablespoon of potato starch or sweet potato starch. Now I'm going to add a tiny amount of baking soda. Baking soda is a tenderizer that changes the texture of the meat somewhat. It will give the fish balls more balance. 
You don't want to add too much of it as we impart an alkalic flavor. About a quarter teaspoon to half a teaspoon is good. Now remember I used egg white powder earlier. With that I can add ice to the mixture to compensate for the water content in the fresh egg whites. But ice also helps cool down the goo so it becomes easier to handle it's because it is very oily. You can also use cold egg whites, it's the same. Also, if you use a blender to puree the fish instead of a food processor, you have a much better time using ice, as the high speed of the blades will inevitably warm up the fish goo, which is not desirable. Now we're going to pound everything until there is a noticeable change in texture. You'll see that the mixture becomes much thicker, almost like a piece of dough. Now we're going to get rid of the fine bones. I found that the food mill works extremely well for this purpose. It works like a soup but is much coarser and has a rotating plate that keeps pushing the puree through. The holes are big enough to let the puree through and small enough not to let any fine bones through. And we just keep cranking it and scrape off the puree with a spoon. And there you have it. Deboned milkfish puree. We'll now take the puree and slap it a few times. This will give the fish balls a nice and chewy texture. To make fish broth, we toss in the fish scraps and bones and slowly boil them in water. Toss in some ginger and salt. Now, milkfish is rich in inosinic acid, and seaweed is rich in glutamic acid. They're synergetic, so seaweed is going to greatly enhance the savoriness of the fish broth. This will give the broth sort of umami boost. This should be done way below boiling temperature so that the broth stays clear and that we don't release too much off flavors of the seaweed. At low heat, it's also easy to skim off the impurities that arise as the broth cooks. Now when the broth is hot enough, we take the fish puree and form it into small balls by squeezing it by hand. It might be easier to oil your hands before handling this mess. You can use a spoon to scoop it out too. Milkfish fillet is very simple. All you need is salt and white pepper. Heat up the pan until smoking hot. And add a little bit of frying oil. And cook the fillet with the skin side facing down first. As the skin cooks, it will fix the fillet in shape so it will not tear easily. When the skin is done cooking, it will no longer stick to the pan and you can easily slide the fillet around. And this is land that can be flipped. You just give the other side about one minute. Try not to overcook it. Just sprinkle with some salt and whatever you like. And we're gonna turn the skin side over once again. This time we're gonna apply higher heat to crisp up the skin. There's gonna be a lot of splatter, so the lid on. Give it about another 30 seconds on high heat. And there you have it. Very crispy, crackling skin and fatty belly. Very juicy filet. Smells like butter. And this is how Taiwanese people eat milkfish. Alright, that's it for today's episode. Stay tuned, and I'll see you next time.